We're in the house today and I wanted to talk to you about the building thermal envelope and specifically how the building thermal envelope is defined by the IECC. Uh, the building thermal envelope is that portion of the building that is separating conditioned space from unconditioned or exempt space. So basically from inside to outside. So we're going to be able to use it as a question when we're out inspecting in the field. We're going to ask that question, do we want this piece of the building to be inside the building thermal envelope or outside the building envelope? The next question we need to ask is what defines the building thermal envelope? And there are two of the four control layers are the main things that define the building thermal envelope. We have the thermal portion control layer and we have the air barrier control layer or the air control layer. From a code perspective, the alignment of the thermal control layer and the air control layer all the way around the building envelope and the continuity of that all the way around the building envelope is key for the energy code. So we want to talk first about the air control layer and the code is looking at the exterior sheathing of the house as the primary exterior air barrier system of the home and then the drywall on the inside of the home as your primary interior air barrier of the house and where you don't have continuity of either the exterior air barrier system or the interior air barrier system the code is asking you to add a supplemental air barrier now we might in normal construction think about a just one primary air barrier system maybe on the outside it would be a zip system uh, for example and it's taped and sealed and whatnot and that is my air barrier but remember that the interior drywall is going to help you create a more airtight house. Or you might think about the primary air barrier system on the inside of the house with newer systems like the Sega Myrex product. Uh, that product is a vapor control layer and an air control layer kind of mixed into one. But again, from the code perspective, we're looking for that continuity of the primary exterior air barrier system and the primary interior air barrier system so that we can say that I am standing inside the building envelope right now, not outside the building envelope. So it's that membrane or that plane of the house that is separating conditioned space from unconditioned space. So we have a tuck under garage situation, which means we have a second floor over the garage. Uh, so again, defining our building thermal envelope is the garage inside the conditioned space or outside the conditioned space. Where do we want it to be? Uh, garages are included in the air barrier, air sealing and insulation insulation table. And it basically just says that the garage has to be separated from the house. It doesn't give you much guidance beyond that. Uh, so we have to define that building thermal envelope and we need to insulate that building thermal envelope. Uh, so we have the insulation here. This is a shear wall, but on the other side, it's insulated as well. And there's conditioned space over there. And then we have our floor system here. And in this case, we have some plumbing in that floor system. So they've dropped the ceilings here to add more additional insulation here. So again, defining that building thermal envelope, which is the alignment of our insulation and our air barrier systems. And then we get to the air ceiling side of it. How do we separate this space the air in this space from the air inside the house. That becomes a little bit more difficult because these are complex assemblies here. And the code doesn't ask us to do a pressure test when we're doing our blower door test to be able to identify is the garage completely outside or partially inside the building envelope. So we could do that, but the code doesn't require it. Now, why is it an issue? Well, we park our cars here. We store gasoline here. We store pesticides for our gardens in our garages. All of those things, off gas, nasty pollutants that we want to keep outside the conditioned space of the house. So ensuring that this garage is separated, not only thermally separated from the house, but separated from an air tightness perspective from the house. So we need to learn all of those details of proper air barrier placement, and then air sealing all of the penetrations that we, we might make into the house through the garage, uh, including at our rim joists, including at our rim, uh, rim to foundation connection, including uh, plumbing penetrations and, and duct penetrations into our floor systems, and ensuring that our floor system 
is an airtight floor system, which means that, again, a floor is a wall that's been laid flat, and therefore we want to air seal all six sides of that cavity in order to make the insulation work better, but also to increase the airtight separation of the garage and the house. So we really need to think about the perimeter of that floor system, the rim board to the sub subfloor, the rim board to the drywall, uh, or whatever is constituting that exterior side air barrier in this case, which in this case would be drywall. We need it to be airtight.